Hey guys, how's it going? Remington here, and today I'm with you for a tutorial on how to rig a T-Rex in Blender with inverse kinematics. <laughs> so this is the final product right here. I have a little bit of a walk animation loaded onto it. It's a little bit laggy at the moment, but you can see it's just a general walk animation. Nothing too fancy, very basic. And uh, you can kind of see here if we look, this is just the base rig right here. Uh, if we select these bottom pieces and move them up, the leg, the entire leg moves. Same thing over here. And if we move this tail, oops, wrong way. <laughs> if we move this, you can see it kind of wags more like it naturally would instead of having to pose every individual bone. And also up here we can see it moves and the jaw drops a little bit as well. And there are also some restrictions, so you can see I can't move this top jaw because that's not how T-Rexes work. So let's go ahead and get the base mesh. There is a link down in the description that will lead you to this. It is made by Joel Anderson, so uh, you can see it's fully rigged with my muscle and on his website, I think that is. And it's a free model, don't use commercially. If you use it, give him credit. So credit to you, Joel, for letting us use this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click download here. Download. Hopefully it shouldn't take too long. Alright, so actually if you head onto his website, if you look down here in this little thing it says want to take a closer look, please download the free model. Click that and it'll download a lot faster than Sketchfab downloads it. I don't know why Sketchfab takes so long. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the zip file, extract that to my desktop, and you'll see 88%. And now we can go ahead and close our web browser. And here is our 3D model right here. It is a, let's see here, OBJ file. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Blender now. Actually, we'll close the previous version. Close. Okay, it doesn't want to close. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and delete everything in my startup scene, and I'm going to change this to Cycles Render because that's what I always use, even though the rendering engine doesn't have anything to do with your rigging and animation. And I'm going to go ahead and import it by going to File, Import, and then OBJ, and we should see it somewhere on our desktop. Since that's where I extracted to. Uh oh. It's gonna be annoying. Desktop. What's it called? T Rex model. There, there it goes. Alright, OBJ. It's gonna take a second to open because it is a high poly model. And you can see here is our wonderful thing. And it's really dark right now because the materials are messed up. I think. Uh oh. Right, so I don't know why it just crashed there, but I'm going to go ahead and fix all of the uh, textures really quick here. Just by bringing them up. That way we have a nice light model to work with that we can see all the shading, and we don't have anything else. So I'm going to select everything by pressing A twice. Let me turn. And then I'm going to scale this down. So let's go ahead and add our first bone by pressing Shift A, going down to Armature and Single Bone. And then in our Armature settings over here, we're going to check X-Ray, and I'm going to change mine to B-Bone. If you don't want to do this, that's fine. Some people like octahedral, some people like stick, some people like envelope. I prefer B-Bone. Now if we go to our orthographic view by pressing numpad 3 and pressing 5, we can position our bone so it is right above the hips, if that makes sense. So I'm going to rotate across the x-axis axis 90 degrees and move it up. Maybe rotate it a bit more so it fits the model. And I want it to be right above where the hips are going. So it's going to be right there. We're going to go and press tab to switch into edit mode and we're just going to kind of build a general structure. It should go down to the base of the neck, up to the top of the head. And I'm going to have this thing coming down for the lower jaw. Actually, we'll move this down a little bit because I imagine he has some fat on top of his head. And then we'll move upper jaw just like that. And then we'll go ahead and extrude this this way, down the tail, making a few bones, not too many. Just like that. Alright. And then let's go ahead and position this correctly because you'll notice it's all linear right now because that's the way we built this. So I'll switch into top orthographic view by pressing numpad 7. And let's go ahead and position these all properly. Okay, nice and in the center there. Alright, so there we go. So now it looks like it's oriented relatively close. The head's a little bit off here. Just grab all of these right here, switch back in, center that just like that. So now you can see it's centered in the body, centered in the tail, that's close enough. And it is also centered in the head. So 
next we need to go ahead and make the hips. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my main thing in there. I don't know what to call it really. I'm gonna switch into front view right here and I'm going to extrude it out across the X axis. Right about there. Select that again, E, X, extrude it to about there. And I'm just gonna go ahead and drop it down a little bit so it's at the top of the thigh about and it's lined up properly from the front. So right about there looks good. Doesn't matter if it's completely symmetrical. As long as it's close, it's good. So I'm gonna select both of these uh, little front parts right here. I'm gonna switch into the side view and extrude them down the leg to right about where the knee is, right where you'd imagine the joint would be. Back down to this little joint right here, I believe that's a foot joint. And then we also extrude it back down into the foot right here. And we'll uh, go into the toes in a little bit but for now, we'll just leave it like that. And you'll notice this one's not lined up, this back one's not lined up at all. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Just go ahead and drag it into position. So there we go, that looks relatively accurate. And now we'll switch back into front view and we'll go ahead and fix these up a little bit. Drag them into where they actually need to go so they're not just floating off the body. And this is my general process with rigging everything. So it's just kind of follow the general skeleton of whatever you're rigging. And then you can tweak it more later. So that's just a general guideline. So now we have the legs built, now we just need the arms. So typically in a human model we'd add some sort of a, of a shoulder. But since this is a T-Rex we'll add a kind of a funky shoulder almost. So I'm going to extrude it to about just about the outside of their arm, or the T-Rex's arm right here. And I'll do the same over here, so it's right on the outside. Then I'll select both, extrude it down, extrude it out, even though this is technically down, we'll pretend it's out, and then we'll just position it accordingly from the side. Position it right at the joint, and now we have a nice, well, nice even skeleton, <laughs> nicely aligned. So now I'm gonna go ahead and choose both of these last pieces and extrude them across the y-axis back a little bit. And these will be bones for our inverse kinematics that we'll go into later. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, extrude the feet so it goes to the toes. If uh, you have like claws on it or something, make sure you position it at the base of the claw. And then we'll use white painting if you have to fix anything later. That looks pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfect because we can always fix this with weight painting and uh, all sorts of other tools included in Blender. And let's do the same thing here. All right, so there we go. We have our entire skeleton built. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, get out of edit mode and not edit mode in pose mode. We're gonna make sure we have everything selected, so double tap A. All right, we're gonna go into pose, transform, scale B-bone, and now we can make it a little bit thinner. You can also press, I believe it's control shift S, or control alt S. So that way we have a little bit more workable and you can really see the fine little details of the mesh and there you go, or not of the mesh but of the model and there you can see we have a little bit of an error. Um, everything else seems pretty okay though, just a little bit of tweaking that you'll have to do. But other than that it looks relatively good. So now what we're going to go ahead and do here is switch back into object mode. And now you can see we have our entire mesh here. So what I'm going to do is go back into edit mode once again. I'm going to press shift A and you can see it adds a bone for us right here. I'm going to move this bone across down here and I'm going to scale this bone up. So I'm going to go to armature, transform, scale B bone, and I'm going to make it nice and fat. Just like that, that big block. And I'm going to position it right on this last little twig that we had coming out back here. If you have to make it a bit thinner, that's okay. Just make sure you can see both the bone and the bone inside of it. Now I don't believe there, oh yep, you can. So you can shift D 
to duplicate that and then we can go ahead and position that over here as well. And these will be our bones for inverse kinematics. So now we can go ahead and select our mesh right here and we're going to go ahead and hold shift and select the model, press control P and then we're going to select with automatic weights. However, before you do this, I'm going to save this as T-Rex tutorial just so in case anything goes wrong. It rarely does, but just in case. So now we're going to press control P again with automatic weights and you can see it'll load for a little bit here and you can see we're now done. So now if we select our armature and we go into pose mode and we move something, voila, our mesh now moves and you notice the teeth and eyes are, are not. And that's a little bit frustrating, but you can see our mesh now moves. If we try and move this, that now moves and you can see the claw is still there. It's because of a weight painting issue. We'll have to fix that in a little bit. You can see the tail moves. Everything should move relatively accordingly. Now there are some glitchy things, of course. So let's go ahead and look at some of the weight painting things that we have to do here. So one thing is that uh, the reason that this stuff is sticking here is because this armature right here has weight to it. So if we select this armature, these little uh, inverse kinematics armatures, and then we select the mesh, then we go to weight paint mode, you can see it actually has some weight right there. So we'll switch from draw to subtract, and now we'll subtract all of this from there. So I'm going to set the strength to 1 just to make sure it's really powerful get rid of all of that. You shouldn't have any spikes coming out. If you do, that means you're going to have some issues later. Alright, and now let's go ahead and select this bone, and you'll notice this bone has some too, so let me, uh, oops. So let's go ahead and drag this out a little bit with RX, and then we'll select this mesh, or this bone again, and just make sure we got no spikes, because spikes mean there are errors, and errors are not good. All right, I keep thinking this is uh, Photoshop and that doing that will make it bigger or smaller, but it's not. All right, so let's go ahead and select everything. So AA, then Alt R, which will get rid of all of the rotation on any of the bones. And then we'll switch back to object mode. And then we should be able to move our mesh without getting any of those nasty little errors. And you'll notice the claws are staying behind. I'll show you how to fix this in a little bit. So next, what we need to do is go ahead and set up our restrictions on the tail and uh, the legs and stuff like that. So restrictions basically prevent bones from moving. So let's say I wanted this jaw so I can't drop it back this far. Because obviously that is not very realistic, especially for a T-Rex. So what we'll do is we'll come into the bone settings here, these little bone constraints, and we'll add a limit rotation. And for me, it's rotating across Let's see here. Um, if we go back into the armature settings and we show the axes, uh, you'll be able to see that the x-axis is what it's rotating on when we're rotating it like this. Because each bone has its own axis, which is a little bit confusing at first, but you'll get used to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to limit x, and then we're going to drag the minimum until it's in the position that we want it, until it's like right where it was before, so it looks like it's about negative 27. Uh, but actually it looks like you'll, you'll have to play with this a little bit so you can see the maximum is how far it can go back really so now like say if I set it to 47 it's only going to be able to go between 79 or negative 79.6 degrees and 47 degrees now if I set this all the way back up to here per se and we set this to negative 80 maybe now you can see it goes down to here and only up to here, and it won't go any further than here. I'm gonna drop the minimum to maybe negative 60. Uh -oh. oh, there we go. So now you can see that's a little bit more realistic. Drops its jaw accordingly, and it's not like, well, it does glitch like that, but you know, if it glitches like that, there's obviously something wrong, and you should realize that. So there we go. That is our first kind of restraint, I guess. And I'm gonna press Alt R to return it to its original. Actually, we'll change the this to negative 20. Actually, can I go less than that? No, negative 20 is where it was before, I think. All right, so make sure you reset it to its original rotation with Alt R. 
And then we'll go ahead and really, I don't think I need any more for this model because uh, the inverse kinematics on the legs will take care of that and the tail is not going to be um, posable really because we're going to be doing something else with it. So speaking of the tail, let's go ahead and get started with it. I'm going to add a bone constraint, copy rotation, X, Y, Z, and we're going to set our target to our armature and we're going to set our bone to whatever bone is before it. So we're starting at the tip of the tail and working our way back. So this is bone 10 at the tail, which means this is bone 9. So we'll select bone 9. So if your tail kind of glitches like this and it kind of looks twisted, you're going to have to edit the roll. So with the tail, you're going to want to set the roll on every bone to zero. So that can be done by pressing N to open up this menu and selecting the bone and setting the roll to zero. Now basically what this does, it just straightens out every bone so it's all at the same uh, kind of axis, I guess. So you can see Z is always up in comparison to the bone. And you should do this with every mesh just to really make sure that uh, nothing's getting screwed up. Do this with the legs too for the inverse kinematics. So really you should do this with your entire mesh. For time's sake, I'm only going to do it with this part. And now if we go back into pose mode, now you can see our tail's a little bit better. It's not completely twisted like it was before. So now let's go ahead and go into this one, add the same thing. We'll add limit, or not limit rotation, sorry. Copy rotation, target, armature, bone, and then this will be bone eight. Oh, and I forgot, change the space to local space, not world space. I almost forgot that. Local space, local space. And we'll go all the way up to this bone because this is kind of like the base of our tail right here, right? And now, when we position our bone 6 right here, you'll notice it's the only one that's not green in the tail. So if we rotate it across the x-axis, I don't know why it's rotating there. I'll rotate across the z-axis, you'll notice it now kind of curves. And you'll see when we put it off to the right there. I would, if you're using this exact mesh, I would advise putting more bones in the tail because you'll get more of a curve. Uh, since I put so few bones in the tail, it gets kind of straightened out since it is naturally curved right here. So that was a little bit of bad planning on my part, but hopefully we'll be able to overcome that. So now let's go ahead and work on the inverse kinematics for the legs. So go ahead and select whichever bone is the very last bone before the foot and before this little spike. So in my case, it's this bone. We're going to add a bone constraint, inverse kinematics, target, we're going to select armature, and then we have to figure out what bone this is. So if you're using this leg, use this bone. If you're using this leg, use this bone. So this is bone 39, as you can see down here. So we'll go ahead and set the bone to bone 39. And then we have to change this chain length to however many bones are going up to your hip. So you can see there's one, two, three, four. And we're including the bone with inverse kinematics here. So one, two, three, four bones going up to the um, leg. And we'll set that as the chain length. Basically what the chain length is, is it's the, um, the amount of uh, bones it will actually affect. So now you can see if we position it, our bones react just like that. And hey, we can make them do a little dance here. Nothing too fancy. And you'll notice, uh, oh, Alt L. All right, I don't know how to reset the rotation on this, but um, I'll go ahead and just reset it to approximately where it was before. Looks like it was right there. Perfect. And now we'll do the same thing with this leg. And now you'll see whenever we move this, voila, the bone or the entire leg now moves with it. That's just kind of an introduction to rigging Tyrannosaurus Rexes. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I do post new tutorials every Wednesday and some other video every Saturday, which almost always ends up being another tutorial. So if you'd like to see more videos like this, be sure to hit subscribe. And if this video helped you, be sure to drop a like. And if you have anything that you'd like to learn, be sure to leave a comment. I'll do my best to make a tutorial on it. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys later. Adios. Hey guys, how's it going? Remington here, and today I'm with you for a tutorial on how to make this really sick long shadows effect in After Effects.